Do you? Yes. So, are you happy about it? No. See, that was the point I was also making. But why aren't you happy? Can she really copy you? No. So, what are the issues with it that you feel that makes you unique? I have my different audience, so I. You don't will want, have to use this. So, I don't want anyone to copy me. So you want to remain unique, but as a gentleman who have had discussions with us, they have been saying that the whole idea of AI is to facilitate. So for example, some days you don't want to come to work, you want to take chutti, and uh, this AI is there and she's doing your job. How about that? You can go on a 10-day trip. You can relax. You can have color time with your family. You give me a pleasure. Oh wow! So AI is a good thing or bad? So now you will start liking it more, right? If it provides you a week long break or if it allows you to do things that you want to do and you still remain on TV or on digital when you are not there physically. No, I'm not a tech savvy person at all. So I don't want anyone to copy me or uh, not even a machine. No. You don't want a chutti. No, I'm comfortable. You're comfortable. Thank you. So how many of you want chutti? Raise your hand. You would want AI to do your job for seven days, eight days. How many of you? Not even Doctor Ayengar. He has been recommending it big time. Now that I have told him, he is raising his hand. Not done, boss. Not done. So all, all about AI. <laughs> I was just having. I must a good say, laugh about this. Yes, I can yes. completely understand where is this whole idea of being unique. I must say from. you have that art of engaging everyone. A oh, please! Talk. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Please. Yes. Let's move on to the fourth session. We will discuss technical education where we stand in urban and rural India. But before that, can we have the AV, please? Development or modernization. देश के अर्बन और रूरल एरियाज के बीच की खाई को कम कर रहा है. Digital or smart classes, computers, laptops और इंटरनेट की सुविधा के साथ urban areas के students technical education हासिल करने के मामले में काफी आगे हैं. वहीं दूसरी तरफ रूरल एरियाज के टीचर्स की ट्रेनिंग बहुत जरूरी है जिससे वहां के स्टूडेंट्स को अर्बन स्टूडेंट्स की तरह टेक्निकल एजुकेशन मिल सके और इस फर्क को मिटाया जा सके नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू रिक्वेस्ट माय कलीग अदिति त्यागी टू प्लीज कम ऑन स्टेज अ बिग राउंड ऑफ अप्लाउज फॉर माय कलीग अदिति त्यागी मेरी तारीफ में आप लोग ताली नहीं बजाएंगे ना मैं भी आप लोगों को एंटरटेन करना बंद कर दूंगा मजा नहीं आ रहा इतनी तालियों में काम नहीं चलता मैं आपसे ज्यादा तेज बोल रही हूँ प्लीज थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच नाउ आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट माय पैनलिस्ट टू प्लीज कम ऑन स्टेज फर्स्ट वी हैव डॉक्टर पुष्पेंद्र पी सिंह डीन रिसर्च आई गोकुल Then we have Professor Abhishek Tripathi, Pro Vice Chancellor, City University. Welcome, sir. Then we have Dr. V K Ratan, Vice Chancellor, G N University. Welcome, sir. Over to you, Aditi. Thank you, sir. There cannot be anyone like you, sir. So don't worry. So technical education, where we stand in urban and rural India, I think more or less we know the answer, right? Do you think rural and urban are at par? Those who feel yes, just raise your hand. Are you guys listening? Sun rahe ho ab log? तो रूरल और अर्बन दे आर नॉट एट पार हाउ मेनी थिंग दे आर नॉट एट पार जो हाथ नहीं उठा रहे मैं मान लूंगी कि उनको लगता है कि दे आर एट पार तो डिसाइड कर लो जल्दी से आप लोग के पास टेन सेकेंड है क्विकली दिस इज दे आर नॉट एट पार 
No, they are saying they are not at par. They are saying they are not at par. So, I think we already have the answer. And uh, I would like you to build on this. And uh, if you recall my first session, that was precisely my point. In a country where, uh, for example, if I am traveling from Delhi to Chandigarh, there would be certain pockets where my phone would not have the signals and I would not have access to certain information. So I'm sure what we are seeing in this room actually is a reality that exists on the ground. Isn't it, sir? So your, um, your question is the, yeah, the one... Yeah, whether they are at par. Uh, they said they are not at par. So do you agree with them or do you feel uh, see the, it would be a sweeping generalization if we say so? See, first of all, we have to understand what we mean by education. Yeah. Uh, rural India and urban India definitely is not par. If you look at the number of institutions rural India host. Hmm. But if you talk about education... Education is not a problem. Why education is not a problem? No, but, but we are talking about technical education. I'm talking about yeah, technical yeah, education only. Yeah, yeah. So be it anything, technical education or uh, any other education. Education is education. Now, you have partially answered the question that you have actually asked us. Uh, if you look at today, the 75% of India's population having... 4G mobile phones. Mm -hmm. The amount of knowledge that is available on your mobile phone, if a WhatsApp message can reach to, to the remote of the village in this country, knowledge can also reach, education can also reach. The only point, the question is that this education is properly framed and then comes, we are talking about technical education, then comes the immersion programs. Mm -hmm that some hand-on experience is needed. Knowledge they can get, enough knowledge they can get. When we talk about hand-on, of course they can come to the cities for a very short time and they can have the hand-on education. So education is, you have to understand and then if you look at uh, by 2030, by 2030 we will have 6G everywhere and the speed and the connectivity we that you were what? talking, we'll 6G. Have Oh, 6G. 6G. Okay. Okay. So you, uh, the speed uh, you are talking, uh, the connectivity you are talking, for example, at highways earlier, this connectivity was not there, but now it's beautifully there everywhere. If you look at Punjab state, so to say, we have LoRa antennas everywhere in, the, in Punjab. You can get any kind of knowledge anywhere you want. The only point that we have to ask ourselves, are we ready to acquire this knowledge? Through an instrument. Through an inst oh, instrument, knowledge is there. We are actually acquiring the knowledge from that instrument, but probably not acquiring the right kind of knowledge which we are seeking, which we are looking for. WhatsApp messages or the videos, anything you, we are talking about, this thing become viral. Why can, cannot equal to MC square explanation become viral in the rural area? It can also become viral. If I'm ready to explain, equal to mc square or ut equal to half gd square, mm -hmm. of course they will understand. But unfortunately, one thing that is happening in our country is that we, educationists, are not ready to impart that education that India need today, rural India need today, to the rural India. We should come out from our comfort zone and give that explanation on those WhatsApp, YouTube, sorts, whatever it is, so that it can reach to the masses. But we already see so many educationists on uh, these digital platforms, don't we? Um, not enough. You see, the number that we have in our country, uh, and then you see a lot of educationists. I, I give you an example, quickly. We have NPTEL, mm -hmm. we have SWAM portal. We have a lot of these portals where you can learn. But if you go, I don't want to criticize here the very same thing that we have created, but if you go there, you will probably not listen lecture for more than five minutes. Yeah. In Sudarshan's lecture himself, uh, you, you were talking Sudarshan, he is here. This semester, 69,000 students are registered in his lecture. And this is the record in the country. This is the first course in our country which has largest number of students. Why? The question is why 
he has 69,000 students on his course in the country and not other professors. Because he invested one full year of creating this course, doing nothing but the course. And the course is designed in such a way that you feel great about it. For example, you go to the stadium to watch a cricket match, right? Do you enjoy in the same fashion the way you enjoy on TV? Forget about the chips and popcorns that you have in the stadium. No, but both experiences are pretty different. Actually, for example, yes. Actually, for example, yes. For example, for example I'll, I'll answer. When I, uh, by the way, my first specialization was sports. So I have been, I have seen India lifting World T20 2007, World Cup 2011, Champions Trophy in England in 23, 2013, then uh, Virat Kohli winning under 19 World Cup. So I've seen quite a bit of history. And I can tell you, my friends, my family, they have seen the same moments on TV. Absolutely. But my experience is very different and I would say I was part of history because not just that I was physically present over there, but I was witness to the emotion there. Agreed. The energy there. Absolutely. The ups and the downs of uh, a cricket match. Yes. You yes. experience it firsthand when you are sitting in that stadium and that too you are sharing with thousands of people. Very true. Very true. But we are not talking about the emotions here. We are talking about what was the velocity of the ball when it hit the bat. You as an audience when you are sitting, you cannot understand that. But my TV is explaining me. What is the exact emotion of Virat Kohli when he hit the ball? You cannot notice that exact emotion because you are sitting too far. But my TV and camera is giving me that possibility that I can see that emotion. What was the angle of the ball when Virat Kohli hit the six? The angle will precisely be calculated on TV and it will be given to me that this was 35 degree and the okay. angle from the projection so was good, good, good observation. Now let me go back to these youngsters, the people over here in this room. How many of you watch cricket and you want to know the trajectory of the ball, whether it was hitting the stumps, whether it was missing the stumps. I'm not talking about when there is a decision to be taken by the third umpire. But uh, by the way, Jai Hind, the uh, General Dillon, so nice to have you here. I'm just going to finish with these gentlemen and then we will have this special session. Please use your round of applause for General Sir, please. Yeah, so coming back to the question as we are talking about cricket, just very quickly, how many of you would want to know the trajectory of the ball? Just tell me, just raise your hand. How many of you? So I have, I can count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, now let me ask you, would you like to watch a cricket game in a stadium? Yeah, so see? I'll, I'll answer this, uh, give me a second. See, I'm also not interested in the trajectory of the ball. But if I want to write an exam, if I want to utilize this knowledge that I'm getting from the trajectory of the ball, I'm interested. Here we are not talking about the game as an emotion. Here we are talking about education for education, educating myself and then utilizing this education for creating something new. Now this is where, so the point I was trying to make, let's say if I'm explaining the projectile motion to the student of 12th class. Yes. If I will do on the blackboard, I'll do it differently. If I can do it beautifully on a screen, which I can repeat multiple times, show him different angles, the student can understand it better. And then what we call audio visual. See, TV become very popular as compared to newspaper. You know why? Why Aditi is so popular as compared to a person? Even you look at P. Sainath, the person who used to write. How many people know P. Sainath here? Nobody. But people know Aditi because Aditi comes on a screen. So there is a challenge. So you have to bring that Thank education. You. you have to bring that education on screen beautifully so people can understand it better. And this we can do easily. We can take this education to the rural India easily. Okay. You are going rural India, they know you. Okay. They don't know me. Okay. So Professor Tripathi, I'm yes, just sir. going to build on the analogy that we were using from a cricket stadium. When we talk about education, like I would not take anybody else's example, I would take my example. I want to go to the classroom. I don't want to be sitting in a room and uh, dealing with the screen and listening to that uh, lecture which is being delivered to me or the theories that are being explained to me. I would rather be in a group, interacting with the group as well and the teacher as well. So how, uh, like, 
what sort of gap you see or the disparity you see when we talk about the urban area vis-a-vis -vis rural area? Right. So, uh, whenever we talk about education, uh, I've been listening to all the uh, discourse which has been happening over here. And uh, we know very important part. Uh, first of all, uh, as you said, there is no replacement of classroom. First of all, let us accept this. I'll tell you why I'm saying this. Uh, yes, you can gain knowledge online. We do. All professors do. We go through a lot of lectures, lectures of the uh, better ones. But at the same time, education is not just about learning any skill or learning one particular concept. It is about the experience you have. Let me tell you about a student coming to college. I, as a student, when I go to college, I go to a university. I'm not just expecting some lecturer to teach me something. I'm expecting a lot of things. My gentleman, the, the boy sitting over there, he was talking about girlfriend. I'm expecting that experience. Yeah. Because I'll tell you what. Uh, at one particular age, I'm not talking about the biggest problem when we grow older, like uh, uh, that way I am now. We stop thinking like them. We need to go to their age and try to understand what are the problems they're facing, what are the, what are the experiences. I'm not against technology. I'm 100% in technology. I'm, I, I believe that AI can really transform the way things are uh, happening. But at the same time, I believe that education is not just technology. Technology can facilitate education at one point of time. But classroom experience, moving around with friends, moving, having that informal relationship with the teacher, informal relationship with the friends, having that chai in uh, um, canteen, that experience. that experience, that is something that cannot be replaced. So, uh, achha, when I talk about, when we talk about rural and urban areas, of course, there's a gap. Um, I was born in a village and I studied up to fourth standard in a village. And after that, I went to urban area and uh, because I was good in studies, I went into a different thing and different uh, competitive exams and all those things. But there are many of my friends who are still there. They're still struggling to get the, get the same kind of education I got in my life. So definitely there's a gap. And I'm very positive about the technology coming in the future and doing a lot to transform the rural India and give rural India the same opportunities which urban India is having. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, but yes, uh, when I was listening to AI, there's nothing to get afraid of AI. But at the same time, there's nothing to be so excited about AI also. Hmm. I'll tell you why. Because uh, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm that what uh, youngsters call millennial, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I've seen 1990s, 1985, 1986, right? When computer came, uh, I, I want uh, from all my seniors, all my friends sitting over here, when computers came in 1995, aggressively in 1995 in India, everyone was scared about their job. I remember when I was a ninth standard, uh, I went to this typing lesson, sir, in typewriter to learn typing. See, skills change. Uh, things change. Maybe there will be new, newer kinds of jobs in the future which we can't even think of today. But human intelligence is going to remain same and we nobody is going to lose their job i'm for sure the thing is people who were typing in typewriter before now they're typing in computers maybe in future they will be making prompt but type of profiles will change but at the same time everyone's job is safer oh, the only thing is we will need a skill upgradation with the with the advent of technology Rest everything will remain same, ma'am. We will remain same. Humans will remain same. They all are, uh, uh, even future generations, they are going to have great teachers in their life. Oh, that is such an assurance because uh, for someone like me, my professors, my teachers, they have played a huge role if I'm sitting here today and having this conversation and somebody in this room feels that I talk well, credit goes to them. I'll, I'll, uh, I'm really sorry. Can I? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, I remember one of the incidents which happened some a week back. Because I'm a very friendly teacher to my students, so students approach me informal. So, one of my students, very good student, uh, he is excellent performer, and he was not that good for four days. And I can uh, look at him in the classroom and I can see like, okay, you're not performing good. So, uh, I just called him in my cabin and I asked him, what, what is the problem? Is there any problem going on? He just cried. 
he cried and said like uh, uh, my mother mother is uh, hospitalized she is suffering from some uh, disease and he just cried and after crying i did not say anything i did not give him any prescription which we normally humans do i just listened to him and after some time he went back to his class you know one this cannot be done by ai i fully agree with you this will be done by a teacher and it will always be done by a teacher so i now that you have shared this experience i recall my uh, conversation with one of my professors his name is dr ranga rao he is now in puttaparthi he is teaching kids who are who, do, who are not privileged and he told me once uh, we were having a discussion about a situation and he told me and i'm sharing it because that is what is called human experience and wisdom and that has kept me going and he said aditi is aditi's best friend aditi should not look for support outside aditi has to become aditi's friend so if any one of you going through any sort of crisis the first person that needs to be helped by someone that is you are going to help yourself and please help yourself and become so strong that you become your own friend so moving coming back to the discussion technical education so sir what sort of challenges that exist in the rural markets and and also the behavior of a student coming from a rural background yeah see so if you hold it up and closer your voice would be audible sir just hold it up and closer no so i'll give you mine that's okay yeah the the discussion we have heard about your teacher my teacher the concept is that with ai or with the technology in hindi i'll say we can have the uh, we can have the information not the gyan gyan is given by the teacher so the information is available on net you put some word you will get the lot of information there is a but the gyan the real where the teacher comes the teacher is required the students will bring whatever you give them the topic they will bring the information from the net or from ai but the gyan the real things you have to tell them what your teacher have told what yeah 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 but now coming to the rural part we are uh, there is a lot of difference in rural and urban still we are moving ahead with technology technology is moving fast right we are having chat gpt industry is moving to 4.0 5.0 again industry is coming but in rural if we go really we go we get the technology they get the message but we don't still we are lacking the infrastructure the availability and the institutions where they can get the good teachers good infra the rural students they don't know what are the new fields what where to go the even in rural india if you see we have uh, the villages where the gender inequality is still there the girls are not allowed to go to schools even to schools or to colleges they are confined that you don't have to study so they they are not going for technical education you see the technical education the infrastructure is good the school may be there the, the but the facilities we have lot of institutes i have uh, once also given earlier also i have given a suggestion that we have so many institutes maybe uh, i'll not name uh, the any of the university but we have very good institutes where the technical facilities are available and they are under utilized why don't we combine them let let the students from the rural are trained they are given the even the awareness that this is how the technology is moving the you may be having in the government setup lot of money is spent by the country and to facilitate give the facilities but they are lying I, i i have been to punjab i have been in punjab university i have seen many of the equipments the students are not allowed to work the rural students they don't know even that if i have to go there if i have to how how to work let us say in energy solar energy 
is the power which is required in the rural area but they don't have so much knowledge and if they have knowledge they don't have facility if they go to some place they are not allowed to work so this type of uh, the difference between rural and urban we have to minimize so that we have to expand the technology the technology is there i am not saying the technology is there we are moving ahead but we have to take it to the masses how many people know how many people are using the technology we have to take it to the masses and we whatever we have we have to spread it and we have to take to the masses to make all the uh, the people know that we can and then they have to think you see when when we take the to the masses the ideas will come and those ideas will bring more changes in the technologies now that you are making this point general dillon is here and uh, they have done a fantastic job actually in far flung areas and uh, i would rather like to include him in this discussion i know he's our special guest but sir uh, this is a session where i would like you to be part of it the sort of work that army has done in terms of technical education and especially in uh, i would not call kashmir jammu kashmir any more a conflict zone but the world sees it from that lens army has been fantastic over there despite all sorts of challenges being present over there can i okay yeah, i hold it no no problem thank you ma'am uh, actually speaking i uh, listening to it very very carefully and very intensely there is an education and there is something called qualification i am qualified as phd but i may not be educated even beyond 10th right. education comes from your peers from your professors from your teachers from your everything when you traveling in a bus you are getting educated how to deal with the person who is pushing you on the seat so there is a whole something like in army we have a structured training we have unstructured training we have on the job training but the best education comes from the jawans and the gsos who have the experience of 30 years 35 years right. Now talking about uh, how army is doing it, army of course is doing great in AI and technical uh, education in a structured manner. But in a non-structured manner or in our rural areas, we are helping the rural schools, even the government schools, the private schools, even the nomads who are on the line of control. Yeah. We conduct classes for the children because there are no schools in those areas. So that may be a social service, that may be a corporate social responsibility. You call it by any name, but yes. and it has to be a mix of both it can't be this or that you need to have classroom education you need to have ai based you know that audio visual uh, thing we are talking about and we need to combine both and then then the product will be probably the best thank you yeah. so why did i bring in general dilo because i went to this tangdha sector and uh, it is really fascinating and i would like to share this story so you can see pok from this side and there is zero line so you can actually stand on the zero line but you can't cross it because then you will be in pakistan and you will never return until and unless indian army and indian diplomats try their best and they somehow manage to convince them persuade them we have done that in the past but uh, one should never try that and i was not adventurous enough so indian army has been doing a fantastic job over there because it is very difficult for any government to get over there but the army which is present over there and the officer who's there they have been contributing a lot to the society and they have been contributing to the technical education that that we are discussing and as sir said it just cannot be so sir said education and qualification i would say schooling and education so anyone can get schooling but the goal should be the education so how to ensure that it is education not just qualification or for that matter schooling that can be uh, uh, ma'am uh, sir is actually talking about the uh, skill part of education yeah right and uh, let me tell you this one very very important now uh, uh, if we make everything uh, rather than working on skills or making skill as qualification if we if we just keep on making qualifications as qualific uh, qualification for anything i'm saying right like for example anyone doing msc mass comm can become uh, uh, anchor let me let me just give this example now we will have bad anchors then sorry we'll have bad anchors then so 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 so, so <laughs> it is an interesting observation so i'm a journalist without a degree my degree is masters in english so i have done b honors english from sri venkateshwara college i have done masters in english from sri venkateshwara college i have done 
I have a management degree in sports administration from one of the top European university, that is uh, EPFL. So my degree is not in mass communications. I've, I, I have learned whatever I have learned on the field. So I got validation, right? So that is really great. <laughs> now, uh, handling an institution, I come across a lot of issues. I'll tell you what, uh, some of the issues which are very much related to what topic we are start, uh, talking sure, about, sir. right? Uh, it is not necessary that all PhDs are good teachers. Let me be very straight on this. It is not necessary that all researchers are very good teachers. Mm -hmm. It is not necessary that all teachers are good researchers. It is not necessary that all teachers should be qualified. It is not ne necessary that all researchers are qualified. Let me, let me be very uh, ruthless on this because what we biggest mistake we are doing is, uh, we are, we have always been giving a lot of priority to the paper certificates rather than the skills. And that is the biggest mistake we have been doing. And that is to be constructed even in rural and urban areas, both. I'll tell you what, uh, previously, uh, uh, if you talk about someone, um, uh, let me tell you, pen and paper examination was never part of Indian culture. Uh, if someone has to win that bow and arrow wala, Arjun wala award, has, someone has to win, then Arjun has to defeat uh, Dronacharya or has to come somewhere near Dronacharya. We came up with this pen and paper type of examination only because we wanted to be like someone. If I want to become an anchor, I'll have to speak like someone and I'll have to become, I'll have to learn from you what are the skills you need to be so entertaining, to be so uh, uh, always alive, that, that kind of skills I need. I may or may not, may not have that qualification. The biggest problem we are facing here is, uh, the norms we have, I'll, I'll, I'll be very strict on this because uh, we'll have to comply with certain norms. Sure. As an institution, as higher as institution, educational institutions, we have to comply with certain norms. Mm -hmm. And we do all our means, all, mm -hmm. all people sitting over, over here will agree, we try everything to comply with the, those norms. But are we really doing justice to our students? That is the first question I need to ask to each and every uh, person sitting over here. Even after my class of financial management, if someone is going and watching or let me say he's, he didn't understand my concept. I'm a big researcher. I've learned everything. I've done a lot of research on IMF, WTO, blah, 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 everything. But I'm not able to explain break even point to my student. Do you think, are we doing justice? That is the question. So teaching is a skill. It has nothing to do with your qualification. Uh, let me give you a lot of examples sure. of great teachers. Anand Kumar sir is here. Let me quote. He is not PhD. He has been awarded PhD by some university now. Uh, we've got Khan sir now. Yeah. I love his teaching style. So a lot of teachers are there who may or may not be qualified. But at the same time, I'm not saying qualified teachers are not good teachers. I've seen a lot of great qualified teachers uh, who are PhDs, who have done deal it, they've gone to US, they've learned, they've done research and they're absolutely great teachers. I'm student of I am Pandey sir, he's absolutely great teacher and a great researcher, everyone knows I am Pandey sir by name. So there is difference between skill and real qualification you have hmm. and that is an irony in our country, I don't know how to come up with this and it will take a lot of time. But that is what the fact is. So the very fact that we are talking about technology, yet we are talking about the teacher, and teacher is uh, addressed as guru in our uh, sanskar and parampara, it explains the whole debate. I think it settles the debate in ca if you believe there is any debate between technology and a teacher. So on this note, I would like to conclude this session. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining this and uh, sharing your insights. Thank you. Thank you so much, all. Please stay on stage. Now I would like to invite Mr. Jagmeet Jammu. Regional Head New Hidden Punjab Haryana GKLS to please come and stay on the stage at Honorable Guest. First, we have Dr. Pushpendra P. Singh, Dean Research IIT Bhopal. Thank you so much, sir. A huge round of applause for our Honorable Guest. I can see that. Next we have Professor Abhishek Tripathi, Professor Vice Chancellor, City University. Thank you so much, sir. Then we have Dr.
डॉक्टर वी के रतन वाइस चांसलर जी एन ए